Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting Dr. Edwin Ricci. He's with the University of Kentucky as Extension Soil Scientist there. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we have in South Central Kentucky a lot of development, a lot of homeowners that move in and they think, oh, I can't get anything to grow on this soil. And a lot of times we see that with development, but there is hope. It's something we can work with and over time, the further we get into the process, hopefully the better off our soils become. Because a lot of times with development, they take a lot of that soil off. They're running, like you said, a lot of heavy equipment mm -hmm. over that area, maybe causing some compaction there. Yes. And so maybe what are some of the first steps that they need to do to maybe reclaim that area? The first thing is probably take a soil sample so you know where you are. Mm -hmm. But then as far as adding things, you might not have much of a choice with the lawn that they established, but you might. If you do, you know, fescue is really good. It's pretty, um, pretty aggressive as far as being able to tolerate compaction. So are some of the Bermuda grasses. But do I want something that's growing in the summer and then I have to plant something else in the winter? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it depends on your level of management. But let's just say you take what they have and I'm going to work with that. So address the soil nutrient issues from your soil test. And then we add nitrogen based on what crop you're growing. Mm -hmm. So make sure that that plant has the nutrients that it needs. If the plant is optimizing its nutrient, it should be able to grow as much as the most limiting layer will prevent, which in this case, since we're talking about compaction, we'll say it's your soil, your soil profile. Mm -hmm. So do that. And I can't stress how much I'm against this, but sometimes you have to. You need to water your grass when you're getting it established and you're trying to overcome some of this stuff because two foot topsoil can hold about four inches of water. You don't have that much. <laughs> you might have six inches, so there's a half inch of water. During the summer, you're pumping out um, over four inches of water per month. So you run out of water in about five days if you don't get a rain. So that's one of the things that you can do to start early on, get that lawn established, let those roots penetrate down through there. And the more they penetrate, the more they're opening up that, that soil and getting a deeper profile. So you go from six inches to eight inches. And then after you know six or eight years, you might have a foot of soil that the plant can utilize. So maybe one of the morals of the story is it's not going to happen overnight. That is probably the biggest thing. Don't expect, <laughs> I'm doing everything right this year and next year it's hands off. I've got the most beautiful yard in the subdivision. Timing of applications of those nutrients is important as well. You don't get a lot of benefit from applying fertilizer when your grass is not growing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the spring, that's when it starts to break dormancy and start growing. That, that's a great time. Um, sometimes late summer, early fall, that will help get the root system established going into um, the winter. So you have a little bit better, more, I guess, protected or more buffered. So it wakes up, it breaks dormancy maybe a week or two earlier. So. The more favorable the environment, the better the plant should perform. Absolutely. Now, what about adding organic matter or improving organic matter? Would you just apply that to your lawn or garden area or flower bed to help improve that area? I would do that. Um, not, not, don't go crazy. Don't add, you know, six inches of compost. But yeah, add, add a certain amount every year. That's going to also improve your soil um, nutrient content, and it's also going to help with your water retention as well over time. So if you're mowing your grass, instead of bagging your clippings, let those clippings fall back down into the grass and they will break down and form organic matter. If you don't have too many trees, you can mulch those leaves and then they'll fall down and through the grass, break down and increase your organic matter. So it's really best if you don't remove those because not only are you removing the nutrients, the MPK with it, you're also removing that organic material that's gonna form organic matter over time. Some people say, I'm just gonna bring in loads and loads of topsoil and I'm gonna solve this problem quickly. Does that usually solve the problem quickly? The short answer is probably not. You still have um, that compacted layer that you're dealing with. So instead of maybe four or six inches, you might have a little bit more. It, it, it would help definitely, but you're still trying to break up that compacted layer where the topsoil and the subsoil meet. And that's pretty expensive too. Thanks for watching and have a great day.